Hi, Hi friends. friends. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Sudbury is the largest city in Northern Ontario by population with a population of 166,000 at the 2021 Canadian Census. By land area, it is the largest in Ontario and fifth largest in Canada. Being located inland, the local climate is extremely seasonal with an average January lows of around minus 18 Celsius and average July highs of 25 degrees Celsius. The Sudbury region was inhabited by the Ojibwe people of the Algonquin group for thousands of years prior to the founding of Sudbury. After much. the discovery of nickel ore in 1883 during the construction of the Transcontinental Railway, Greater Sudbury was formed in 2001 by merging the cities and towns of the former regional municipality of Sudbury with several previously unincorporated townships. The population resides in an urban core and many smaller communities scattered around 330 lakes and among hills of rock blackened by historical smelting activity. Sudbury was once a major lumber center and a world leader in nickel mining. Mining and related industries dominated the economy for much of the 20th century. The two major mining companies which shaped the history of Sudbury were Inco, now Valet Limited, which employed more than 25% of the population by the 1970s, and Falconbridge, now Glencore. Sudbury has since expanded from its resource-based economy to emerge as the major retail, economic, health and educational centre for northeastern Ontario. Sudbury is also home to a large Franco-Ontarian population which influences its arts and culture. James Worthington, the superintendent of construction on the Northern Ontario segment of the railway, selected the name Sudbury after Sudbury, Suffolk in England, which was the hometown of his wife, Carolyn Hitchcock. The city's official name was changed to Greater Sudbury in 2001 when it was amalgamated with its suburban towns into the current city on the grounds of ensuring that the merger did not erase the long-standing community identities of the outlying towns. In everyday usage, however, the city is still more commonly referred to as just Sudbury. The Sudbury region was inhabited by the Ojibwe people of the Algonquin group as early as 9,000 years ago following the retreat of the last continental ice sheet. In 1850, local Ojibwe chiefs entered into an agreement with the British Crown to share a large tract of land, including what is now Sudbury, as part of the Robinson-Huron Treaty. In exchange, the Crown pledged to pay an annuity to the First Nations people, which was originally set at $1.60 per treaty member and increased incrementally. Its last increase was in 1874, leaving it fixed at $4. French Jesuits were the first to establish a European settlement when they set up a mission called Saint Anne de Pin just before the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway in 1883. The Saint Anne de Pin Church played a prominent role in the development of Franco Ontarian culture in this region. Coincidentally, Saint Anne is the patron saint of minors. During construction of the railway in 1883, blasting and excavation revealed high concentrations of nickel-copper ore at Murray Mine on the edge of the Sudbury Basin. This discovery brought the first waves of European settlers who arrived not only to work at the mines, 
but also to build a service station for railway workers. Sudbury was incorporated as a town in 1893 and its first mayor was Joseph Etienne, also known as Stephen Fournier. The American inventor Thomas Edison visited the Sudbury area as a prospector in 1901. He is credited with the original discovery of the ore body at Falconbridge. Rich deposits of nickel sulfide ore were discovered in the Sudbury Basin geological formation. The construction of the railway allowed exploitation of these mineral resources and shipment of the commodities to markets and ports, as well as large-scale lumber extraction. Mining began to replace lumber as the primary industry as the area's transportation network was improved to include trams. These enabled workers to live in one community and work in another. Sudbury's economy was dominated by the mining industry for much of the 20th century. Two major mining companies were created, Inco in 1902 and Falconbridge in 1928. They became two of the city's major employers and two of the world's leading producers of nickel. Through the decades that followed, Sudbury's economy went through boom and bust cycles as world demand for nickel fluctuated. Demand was high during the First World War when Sudbury mined nickel was used extensively in the manufacturing of artillery in Sheffield, England. It bottomed out when the war ended and then rose again in the mid-1920s as peacetime uses for nickel began to develop. The town was reincorporated as a city in 1930. The city recovered from the Great Depression much more quickly than almost any other city in North America due to increased demand for nickel in the 1930s. Sudbury was the fastest growing city and one of the wealthiest cities in Canada for most of the decade. Many of the city's social problems in the Great Depression era were not caused by unemployment or poverty, but due to the difficulty in keeping up with all of the new infrastructure demands created by rapid growth. For example, employed mine workers sometimes ended up living in boarding houses or makeshift shanty towns because demand for new housing was rising faster than supply. Between 1936 and 1941, the city was ordered into receivership by the Ontario Municipal Board. Another economic slowdown affected the city in 1937, but the city's fortunes rose again with wartime demands during the Second World War. The Froude mine alone accounted for 40% of all the nickel used in Allied artillery production during the war. After the end of the war, Sudbury was in a good position to supply nickel to the United States government when it decided to stockpile non-Soviet supplies during the Cold War. The open coke beds used in the early to mid 20th century and logging for fuel resulted in a near total loss of native vegetation in the area. Consequently, the terrain was made up of exposed rocky outcrops, permanently stained charcoal black by the air pollution from the roasting yards. Acid rain added more staining in a layer that penetrates up to three inches into the once pink gray granite. Sudbury is built around many small rocky mountains with exposed igneous rock of the Canadian Shield. The ore deposits in Sudbury are part of the large geological structure known as the Sudbury Basin, which are the remnants of nearly 2 billion year old impact crater. Long thought to be the result of a meteorite collision, more recently analysis has suggested that the crater may in fact have been created by a comet. The Big Nickel is a 9 meter replica of a 1951 Canadian nickel, located at the grounds of the Dynamic Earth Science Museum in Greater Sudbury, Ontario. 
and it's the world's largest depiction of a coin. The 12-sided nickel is located on a small hill overlooking the intersection of Municipal Road 55 and Big Nickel Drive at the westernmost end of the Gatchell neighborhood. The Big Nickel celebrated its 45th anniversary on July 22nd, 2009, with the birthday party on the grounds of the Dynamic Earth, including a display of coins from Science North's Inco Coin Collection. The idea for the Big Nickel began in 1963, when Ted Silva, at the time a 28-year-old City of Sudbury fireman, had independently researched his idea and had concluded that it could be a viable and worthwhile project. He began to make this dream a reality by scouting out the highest hills in Sudbury to find the best location. On December 11, 1963, he purchased 17 acres of land from Walter Hodrich for $1 million with a $25 down payment. The land was ideal because its unique location between Sudbury and Copper Cliff. To the west, the large hill provided a sensational view of the Inco mining and smelting complex, including the nightly slag dump, while to the east, one had a beautiful view of the city of Sudbury. In order to raise the money for the development of the project, Silva had a series of commemorative coins struck which represented each of the monuments to be erected at the park. To have worldwide appeal, he conceived the idea for a numismatic park and called it the Canadian Centennial Numismatic Park. The Big Nickel would be its centerpiece. The uniqueness of this park appealed to the numismatics worldwide, who purchased the medallions in order to support the construction and development of the park. The artistic work, such as the design of the King George VI head, the numerals, maple leaf, and the refinery were contracted to Cavallo Signs. All artistic work was affixed to the stainless steel panels on site. Science North is an interactive science museum. The Science Centre, which is Northern Ontario's most popular tourist attraction, consists of two snowflake-shaped buildings on the southwestern shore of Ramsey Lake, just south of the downtown core, and a former ice hockey arena which includes the complex's entrance and an IMAX theatre. The snowflake buildings are connected by a rock tunnel which passes through a billion-year-old geological fault. This fault line was not known to be under the complex when the site was originally selected and was discovered only during the construction of the building in the early 1980s. Where the walkway reaches the larger snowflake, the Vail Cavern Auditorium is frequently used for temporary exhibits, press conferences and other gala events by Science North and the wider community. Inside the main building, a 20-meter fin whale skeleton recovered from Anticosti Island hangs from the ceiling. The complex also features a boat tour the William Ramsey, which offers touring cruises of the scenic Ramsey Lake. The Jim Gordon Boardwalk also extends from the facility to the city's Bell Park along the western shore of the lake. The facility was designed by architect Raymond Moriyama, one of the founding partners of Moriyama and Toshima Architects, based in Toronto. An agency of the Provincial Government of Ontario, Science North is overseen by the Provincial Ministry of Culture. Science North, which was opened in 1984, also owns and operates Sudbury's Dynamic Earth Facility, an Earth Sciences exhibition which is home to the Big Nickel, one of the city's most famous landmarks. From January 22, 2001, to May 10th, 2003, the Big Nickel was temporarily located on the primary Science North grounds 
while Dynamic Earth was under construction. The Science North production team produces object theatres, multimedia presentations, and large format film productions for science museums and educational facilities around North America. Science North's former science director Alan Nursel is a correspondent for the Canadian Science News Magazine series Daily Planet, which airs on the Discovery Channel on, and on CTV. The institution's first science director, David Pearson, returned to that position in 2007. Science North has also worked extensively with the city's Laurentian University on scientific and environmental research and as a partner in the university's graduate program in science communication. Science North runs day camps in the summer, autumn and winter. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video, but most of all, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching!